<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the ringing of that phone bell brings you mystery, adventure. Nero Wolf's office, Archie Goodwin speaking. What? Who? Who is this? Who wants to speak to Mr. Wolf? Nobody. Nobody? I said that. Hang up. It's late and it's too cold. And even if it weren't, I would not consider for one moment moving from this room. Please, Mr. Wolf, I can't hear a thing this old gentleman's saying. Does it matter? You heard what I said? No. Now, what did you say? You were late because she was killed. Well, who was killed? I can't hear you. What is it about, Archie? He says he was due here an hour ago, but she was killed. Who was killed? What does he want? Uh, do you want us to solve the crime? I say, do you want us to find out who killed her? Oh. He says he knows who did it, but he has an important message for you. Well, then come right over. We'll be waiting, Mr. Jenkins. Archie, why do you insist on taking every silly little case? Because, boss, we need to recover from March 15th. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's that renowned genius who is the bulkiest, bulkiest, most ponderous, and most brilliant detective in the world. Yes, none other than that chair-born mass of unpredictable intellect, Nero Wolf, created by Rex Stout, and brought to you in a new series of adventures of this NBC network in the person of Mr. Sidney Greenstreet. <laughs> This case I like to refer to as the case of the Telltale Ribbon. Perhaps a better title would be Wolf Goes A-Hunting. For in a way, this was one of those unusual instances in which my boss, of his own free will and without any coercion, actually decided to leave the house and go to the scene of the crime. It started when the strange old gentleman who phoned us finally arrived. Well, there's our client, Mr. Wolf. Evening. It's me. Who's me? Oh, I, I just phoned you. I, I'm Jenkins. I got a dispatch for Nero Wolf. Oh, you're Jenkins. Well, come in, come in. Uh, Mr. Wolf, this is Mr. Jenkins. Says he has a dispatch for you. Yep. Yeah. Are you Wolf? I am. Where is the dispatch from? Don't know. You, you don't know? How come? Oh, I know, but I'm supposed to say I don't. See? That's my job. What is? Just to say I don't know. What about the matter? Yeah, who was killed? Oh, my goodness. It was a terrible thing. We were just crossing the turnpike, and this fella come at us out of nowhere. The killer? Yeah. Must have been drunk, I guess. Well, how did it happen? Did he shoot her, stab her? Oh, no, no. He ran into her with his car. And she was only nine years old. Your granddaughter? No, no, it was Bessie. But the police got him. I, I have to appear, I guess. Probably get 90 days, he will. The Murder? Murder. Was somebody murdered? I must have missed something. Look, we're talking about Bessie, and what do you want us to do about it? Nothing. Bessie's my old horse. Oh, no. Uh, but say, who was it that was murdered? Nobody yet. Good night, Mr. Jenkins. I thought you said it was important. It might be. At least that's the way I was told. What might be? Uh, this here letter I was bringing to you. This is uh, dispatch. Well, got to get along now. Uh, goodbye. Well, get him. What a pixie. What is in the envelope? Mr. Wolf, look. Five $100 bills. And the note says, Mr. Wolf, your services are desperately needed. Come up this weekend as my guest. Signed, E. Malott. Edwin Malott, the wealthy manufacturer. Hmm. Well, looks as though you're going out this weekend. Well, our GP, my respects to Mr. Malott, and I hope you enjoy the weekend. Good night. <laughs> Something certainly phony about this. There's no party going on here tonight. Yes? What is it? Is this the Malotte place? It is. What do you want? My name's Goodwin. I'm a guest of Mr. Malotte's. A guest? Yes, he invited me down for the weekend. Weekend? Oh. Well, you better step in, please, Mr. Goodwin. Quite a bolt you've got on that door. Yes, isn't it? Just sit down there, please. I'll get Mr. Malotte. He's in the library. Oh, here he is. This is Mr. Goodwin, sir. Says he's come down for the weekend. Mr. Goodwin? Good evening. 
You've come for the weekend, you say? Well, yes. Wasn't that the idea, Mr. Mallott? Well, I, uh, I don't understand, Mr. Goodwin. Didn't you send me this note asking me to come here? Note? I did not. Oh, well, well, this is my personal note stationery, but I don't recall sending this. I didn't even type it. And I'm in the habit of signing my name with a pen, not with a typewriter. E. Malott. You're certainly Edward Malott. Yes. Services are desperately needed. What does this mean? What services? Who are you, Mr. Goodwin? Are you serious? I'm a private investigator. I'm Nero Wolfe's assistant. Oh, indeed. Nero Wolfe, eh? I know of him, yes, indeed. And you really don't know anything about this note? I do not. Are you having a weekend party here? <laughs> I most certainly am not. Then who sent this? And there were five $100 bills as a retainer. I haven't the slightest idea. Oh, uh, Dorothy. Yes? Will you step in here, please? Uh, Miss Davis is my private secretary. Uh, she may know something about this. Yes, Mr. Mallott. What is it? I... Uh, Dorothy. Oh. Dorothy, this is Mr. Goodwin. How do you do, Mr. Goodwin? Well, I... How do you do, Miss Davis? Uh, yes, yes, well. Uh, Mr. Goodwin is assistant to Nero Wolf. You don't say. Nero Wolf, the detective? Oh, I've heard a great deal about him. And about you, too, Mr. Goodwin. Well, now I'm mighty glad to hear you say that, Miss Davis. Uh, Mr. Goodwin has Edward, a note here. Is anything wrong, Edward? I heard voices. Oh, do we have company? Nothing is wrong, Eva. I was calling Dorothy, that's all. Oh, oh this is Mr. Goodwin, Eva. My wife, Mr. Goodwin. How do you do, Mrs. Millard? Mr. Goodwin, I... Oh, yes, how, how do you do? Uh, now, as I was about to say, Dorothy, Mr. Goodwin... What's going on? Mr. Goodwin, uh, this is my son, Larry. Good evening. What's wrong? Uh, Mr. Goodwin has been invited here for the weekend. He has an invitation supposedly written by me. At least uh, it's on my stationery. Look at this, Dorothy. Know anything about this note? No. No. I certainly didn't write it. But it's my personal note paper, and my signature is typewritten. I'd uh, never do that. Well, somebody sent it. Who's Jenkins? Jenkins? Never heard of him. A little dried up old man. He delivered it to us. Yeah, maybe it didn't even come from this house. I'm positive that it didn't. Never heard of Jenkins. You have a typewriter here, of course. Yes. I'd like to see it. Uh, certainly, Mr. Goodwin, in the library. How far have you come, Mr. Goodwin? From New York, Manhattan. Oh, and it's such a dreadful night, too. Yes, yes, and it is rather late. Late? It's only 7.30. Why not stay here for the night? Plenty of room? Uh, yes, Mr. Goodwin, plenty of room. Well, I, I don't really think that's necessary. I, uh... On the other hand, it would be a tough drive back to the city in this storm... I'll accept your hospitality, Mr. Mallott. Very good. Oh, uh, Jeffries, show Mr. Goodwin to the uh, East Wing and uh, take care of his car. Yes, sir. Good night, Mr. Goodwin. You, you mean you're all going to retire now? I haven't even had my dinner. We retire very early here. But Jeffries will prepare anything you want. Good night. <laughs> Speaking. Archie, boss. Well, I'm here at Malat's place, but there ain't no party. What happened? Are you in the right house? I'm afraid I am. They've all gone to bed. Weird bunch. His wife, who looks very sickly and I think wants to say something to me alone, and Larry the son and Malat's secretary, Dorothy Davis. She has me bothered a bit. How unusual. Especially if she's pretty. A beauty. But she seems to know all about me. Hmm. You better come home, Archie. I can see you're in no condition to handle this case properly. Give them the money back. Oh, I forgot to tell you. They don't want me here. Malat didn't send the note. No one here knows anything about it, so we can keep the dough. Interesting indeed. The circumstances would indicate that you should stay there and wait for it to happen. For what to happen? For whatever it is the fates have conspired to have happen there while your shining little ego is in the midst of it. Bye. Who is it? It's Archie Goodwin, Mrs. Mallott. Come in. Come in, please. I saw you give me the eye when I was about to leave. I've been waiting till I felt sure they were all asleep. Now, what's up? I wrote you that note. I sent for you. How do I know that? Old man Jenkins is a scissor and knife sharpener who happens along every month or so. They wouldn't know him. I put five $100 bills in the envelope. Okay, why? 
My life is in danger. I've been threatened. I received three notes through the mail. They were all postmarked in New York City. Could I see them? Here they are. All typewritten. Hmm. The first one reads, there is no love for you in Great Gables. The second, why stay on in the face of death? And the third, the time is shorter than you think. Do you think this is a, well, an inside job, Mrs. Miller? Well, at first I didn't. But lately I've come to think it is. What caused you to think that? For some time I've been having severe spells. I thought it was indigestion. But then it occurred to me that I always broke out in cold perspiration. I was left horribly weakened, terribly thirsty. Thirsty? You fear you're being poisoned? Yes. And since the thought came to me, I've been living in fear. Fear of every bite of food or drink. I had so shattered my nerves that I have to take these yellow sleeping capsules to even close my eyes. Well, here's your husband and his secretary and your son, Larry. Larry is my stepson. Which one do you suspect? The secretary, Dorothy, or my husband, or both. What's the motive? Well, they're in love. She's been here over two years, and they've spent most of their time together. The idea never occurred to me till last week. And when I watched them, it, it was quite obvious. Anybody else know about these three notes? Oh, no. Then I'll keep them for a while. Good night, Mrs. Mallott. And don't worry. What are you doing, Mr. Goodwin, snooping around in Father's library? Well, Larry, I was just trying to find out if this Remington was the machine you used to type those notes. What? What notes? The notes you sent your stepmother. Why, I don't know anything about any notes. Then why were you so startled? I'm not startled. I just, well, uh, why would I threaten her? Well, so you do know about them. I didn't mention the contents of the notes. I just happened to see them on the table in her sitting room. You don't care too much about your stepmother, do you? Oh, she's all right. You don't care too much about Dorothy either, do you? I certainly don't. Why not? Well, I don't like her tactics, making a fool out of my father. If anybody here sent those notes, she did. You think Dorothy would have a motive? I certainly do. Of course, you wouldn't have a motive, would you? No. Well, I'm inclined to think you would. Well, just what motive would I have? You don't seem to like any woman who's too close to your father. Maybe because you'd resent anyone sharing in the estate if your father died. If I were you, Mr. Goodwin, I'd leave. Tonight. And the sooner the better. Good night. Oh, Archie. Archie. Oh, confounded boy. Yes, Archie? You have the wrong number. This is Sherlock Holmes speaking. Why don't you go to bed like the others? You don't have to push it. It'll happen. Even Malotte thinks she's being slowly poisoned. Suspects her husband and his secretary. He could be right. What are the symptoms she suffers? Gastric disturbances, weakness, thirst. Indeed. What about the son? Have any ideas? He doesn't like his stepmother and is decidedly against his father's secretary, Dorothy. He knew all about the notes Mrs. Mallott had received, saw them on her dressing table. He believes Dorothy's the culprit. Then I should say that Dorothy should be the next on your list. You can say that again. Be careful, Archie. Use your head this time. Incidentally, Larry advised me to leave the place tonight. Bit of a threat it was, too. What shall I do, Mr. Anthony? Do nothing. The trouble will come to you. Bye. Oh. Hello there, Mr. Mallard. I thought you turned in for the night. It's quite obvious you thought so, Mr. Goodwin. What are you doing in the library? Why, just looking for something to read. You'll find the books all around the walls, not on my desk. Well, I was looking for a particular kind of book. I'm very much interested in poisons. Poisons? Yeah, a hobby of mine. You happen to have any books on toxicology? I do not. And what's that book on the fourth shelf right beside you? Why, I... I uh... Oh, oh toxicology... Where did that come from? Never saw it before. Hmm... Uh, perhaps it was in that uh, assorted collection I bought a couple of weeks ago. I uh, hadn't noticed it. Larry probably put them on the shelves. Mr. Mallard, how long have you known Dorothy, your secretary? Uh, a little over two years. Did it ever occur to you that she might be, well, infatuated, in love with you? What? Well, of all the... Now, see here. I don't know what you're up to, and I don't know how you got hold of my stationery to write that fake note. It isn't a but fake I... note, Mallard. I'm only trying to find out what's back of it. Mr. Goodwin, there is nothing going on here that requires the services of a detective, and Dorothy is not in love with me. I didn't say she was. I asked you if you thought she might be. Well, since this conversation seems to concern me, I suppose I am at liberty to come in. Oh, you're still up too, Miss Davis. Did you hear what this man said, Dorothy? Yes, I did, Mr. Millard. And I'd like to have a few words alone with Mr. Goodwin. 
if you don't mind. Mr. Goodwin, would you mind coming with me for a few minutes? No, not at all. And, well, it's rather late, Mr. Malott. Don't you think you should retire? It's a heavy day tomorrow. Well, uh, uh, yes. Yes, I suppose I should. And please, don't let this upset you. Mr. Goodwin has been misinformed. I'll straighten him out. Come on, Mr. Goodwin. The bar is right across the hall. I'll fix you a nice, soothing drink. That'll be nice. Well, now, what would you like, Mr. Goodwin? In the way of drinks? Oh, well, some 7-Up. Really? <laughs> Just sit down over there. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Well, where did you get the idea that I was in love with Mr. Malat? First, suppose you tell me if you are in love with him. Yes, I am. But until a few minutes ago, he wasn't even aware of it. I worship him and his work. I never wanted him to know because he's married. It would have caused trouble and I'd have had to leave here. But now he knows it's true. Well, now that he knows, what will happen? Well, I'm going to leave tonight. Now. I see. And since I don't own a car, Mr. Goodwin, I'm going to ask you to do me a very great favor. Would you run me into New York? I want to leave without a word. If I wait till morning, I'll have to explain to Mr. Malott and... Well, that would be most embarrassing, Archie. Oh, now it's Archie. You, you don't really mind, do you? No, no, I guess I don't. I should, maybe, but... Uh... Don't you like your drink? What'd you put in this drink? What do you mean? What'd you dope it with? <laughs> Archie, why would I do that? Might be several reasons. There's nothing in that drink. No? Then suppose you drink it. Why? <laughs> Give it to me. I'll throw it out. If you want another drink, fix it yourself. I'll have my things ready in five minutes. Are you going to take me? Sure. Certainly I'm going to take you. But are you sure you have to go tonight? I must go tonight. Now. I wish I knew why. Mr. Wolf's always so right. What? Just talking to myself. Dorothy! Larry! Jeffries! Come upstairs! What's happened? Call Dr. Hauser. Something terrible has happened to Eva. <laughs> Well, Dr. Hauser? Oh, poor Mrs. Malott. No, there's nothing to be done now. It's all over. Eva, Eva. You'd better lie down, Mr. Malott. I'll phone and take care of everything. I'll be here if you need me. I uh, have to make out the certificate. Yes, come along, Mr. Malott. Just a minute. You too, Larry. I don't want to make this any more unpleasant for you, but, Doctor, just what are you going to put on the certificate as the cause of death? Acute gastritis. Is that what you've been treating her for? Well, she's had several attacks lately. I'd warned her to be cautious of her diet. And that was wise advice, too. Did you know about these attacks, Mr. Malott? Yes, I did. And you, Dorothy? Yes, I knew. And you knew also, Larry? Uh, no, I, I knew she hadn't been feeling well. How long had Mrs. Malott been suffering from insomnia? Oh, a year at least. I prescribed Nemitol. In yellow capsules? Of course. I wrote a prescription every so often calling for 12 capsules. You all knew about that, of course. I thought so. And would this be the prescription, this little box of capsules here on... Well. What's the matter, Mr. Goodwin? That box was open on this nightstand when we stepped into this room. All right, let's have the box, Mr. Malad. Thank you. Why'd you pick it up? Uh, because I... I didn't want the stigma of suicide on Eva's name, nor mine. Suicide? Yes. Eva had this prescription filled yesterday morning. The dose is one at bedtime. Twelve capsules. She took one last night. I glanced at the open box when I came into the room, and there were only eight capsules left. I... I knew instantly what had happened. She'd taken an overdose. Doctor, do you think three capsules would be sufficient to cause her death? I doubt it very much. So do I. Mrs. Malott didn't die from an overdose of sleeping capsules. She was poisoned. Poisoned? Are you crazy? By whom? By you. Or Dorothy. Or Larry. No. I didn't do it. I didn't write those notes. What notes? Mrs. Malott had received three notes threatening her life if she didn't leave this house. Each of you had a motive, so I'm sending this body to the coroner for an immediate autopsy. I won't permit it. The police will see to it. You have no choice. Yes, Archie. What now? Do you know who did it? How do you know anything's happened? Let us call it extrasensory perception. Well, Mrs. Malott was right. She's dead. Her doctor knew nothing about the spell she was having as being caused by anything but indigestion. How about an autopsy? It's all in the works. 
Looks like a metallic poison, all the symptoms. Oh? Did you search the house carefully for such a poison? I did. I'll check the drugstores in the morning. Somebody in that house will purchase some poison. Let me know when the autopsy report is in. Right. Let's see now. We have Mr. Malott, Dorothy Davis, and Larry the son. He's Mr. Malott's son, but not the child of Eva Malott, remember? Yes. Is it true that Dorothy is in love with Malott? Yeah. Dorothy admitted it to me, but claimed Malott wasn't aware of it until tonight. And earlier this evening, Dorothy tried her best to get me out of the house, insisted that I drive her into town. She tried to give me a drink, which I think might have contained knockout drops. You don't say. Archie, I should have Fritz drive me up to the Malott place at once. Archie, are you there? No, boss, I just fainted. <laughs> And that, Mr. Wolf, is most of the story up to now. Very interesting. Yes, indeed. But it isn't true. I did not put anything in Mr. Goodwin's drink. Then did you ask him to take you into town? Yes. And I might have been found in a ditch. Oh, it's ridiculous. Why did you try to get Mr. Goodwin to take you to town? Because I felt it would be too embarrassing to remain until morning. Maybe you'd already given Mother the big dose of poison and wanted Goodwin out before it was discovered. Well, you Wait speaking, a minute. But... Now, Mr. Miller. You claim that you knew nothing about Dorothy being in love with you? Should we believe that? You can believe it or not. Dorothy had a motive to get rid of Mrs. Mallott. It seems that Mr. Mallott had one, too. And so did Larry. What? You admitted to me that you didn't like your stepmother. And that you disliked Dorothy even more. I didn't say that. You said Dorothy was making a fool of your father. You resented the possibility of any woman sharing in the estate. You knew about the sleeping capsules, and you could have put poison in some of them. You could have written those threat notes. And by getting rid of your stepmother and placing the blame on Dorothy, you'll be getting rid of them both. But I didn't. I did not write those notes. You were the only one who knew about them. I was not the only one. I saw Dorothy coming out of Mother's room. It was this afternoon. Mother was out taking his son back. Dorothy did it. She's the one. I think you're the one. No, no, Dorothy wrote those notes. That's a lie. No, she probably slipped into Mother's room and wrote those notes on Mother's portable. What? Hey, just a minute. Archie, come here. I never heard of sex lies. Oh, I didn't do it. You can't send me to jail. I'll kill you first. Larry, drop that gun. Don't come near me, any of you. You're such a fool, Larry. Give me that gun. I'll shoot. I'll shoot. Come on. There. Now, you better quiet down, kid. Or Inspector Crane will take care of you when he arrives. Well, Mr. Wolf, what goes on here? Where's Goodwin? I sent him upstairs, Inspector Kramer, upstairs to Mrs. Malott's room to check on something. Uh, Here he is. Yeah? What have you been doing, Goodwin? This, Inspector, is the piece de resistance. This is what Mr. Wolf has been waiting for. This little black box contains a typewriter, a portable noiseless Remington. Mrs. Malott's typewriter. What? I didn't even know she had a typewriter. Larry knew she had one. And this is undoubtedly the very typewriter the threat notes were written on. All three of them. You were right, boss. Oh, I knew she had a typewriter, but I didn't write those notes. Oh, shut up. Archie, how do you know the notes were written on this typewriter? I've compared the type and the ribbon. They're both the same. These notes were written on this Remington. It was Dorothy! Larry, I don't believe a word you've been saying. Dorothy couldn't possibly be guilty of such a thing. If anyone is guilty, you yourself certainly have all the earmarks. Everybody's against me, even my own father. But I'm innocent, I tell you. Let me get it. I think I know who it is. Hello. Yeah, just a second. You better take it, boss. Wolf. Oh, yes, go ahead. Let's have it. Yes. He's here, but he won't mind. Yes? I see. Uh Uh-huh. You just finished. Oh. Good. Right. Bye. Was it the coroner? The coroner. Reporting that poison was found in the sleeping capsules. And the body. Did they find poison? They did. You're right again, boss. I'm going up to Mrs. Minot's room for a while. I want you to come along with me. Find anything yet, Archie? No, mostly bills and invitations to bridge parties and so on. Ah. You find something, boss? Yes and no. This pocketbook detective story. What about it? I was just flipping through the pages and I find this corner turned down. Well, well. What is it? Look and read. Why stay on in the face of death? 
Interesting. The very words used in one of the notes. Give me the book. Of course, uh, this doesn't prove a thing either. But it does confirm what I was... Oh, oh. What now? This cinches it. Get them all up here, Archie. Tell Kramer to bring them all to the bedroom. Well, Mr. Wolf, what now? As you all know, Mrs. Millot was poisoned by someone who had an opportunity to put it in the sleeping capsule. Someone in this household. Yeah, but which one? The kin? I never bought any poison in my life. Be quiet, will you? No, Inspector, it wasn't Larry. Then I suppose you think I put the rest of that rat poison in your drink, Mr. Goodwin. No, Dorothy, it wasn't you. But how did you know it was rat poison? I didn't. I just guessed. I can think, too. Then if it wasn't Dorothy or Larry, you you must mean me. No, Mr. Lott. No, wait a minute. It had to be somebody. Yes. This is going to be painful for you, Mr. Mallott. Well, you you mean that Mrs. Mallott did commit suicide? It was more than suicide. It was suicide with an attempt to have both you and Dorothy convicted of murder. She planted things? She did. I can't believe it. Show him the pocketbook, mystery. Here's the proof. Some of the threat notes were lifted bodily from this novel. But look on the back cover. Isn't that Mrs. Mallott's handwriting? Yes, and this is the other note, the one to you, Mr. Wolfe composed in pencil before she typed it out on her machine. Then, Wolf, the note you received was the same typing as the threat notes. See for yourself, Inspector. Then why the Dickens didn't Archie compare them right away? Just one of those things, Inspector. There are times when even a good detective is a bit on the, uh, shall we say, dull side. Don't you find it often true, Inspector? Hmm? <laughs> Nice of you to go all the way out there, boss. I was a bit stuck. Quite all right, Archie. Yeah, there's something that still bothers me. So? How can such a sweet, motherly type as Mrs. Mallott cook up such gruesome ideas? She was a very sick woman, mentally as well as physically. She probably felt she was going to die. And her warped mind seized on the opportunity to make sure that this Dorothy didn't get her man after she was dead. And speaking of Dorothy, she's a mighty pretty... Yeah. <laughs> Some beer, please, Archie. If you were so certain that Dorothy wasn't guilty, what was the idea of spending so much time questioning her? Huh? Why, I, I, I... Never mind. The raised eyebrow department answered the question. Well, there are certain rules a good detective always follows. Some are in the book, others aren't. You mean there's nothing in the book which says a good detective shouldn't spend a few minutes with an attractive brunette... Even though she is a murder suspect, the author of that book can be none other than the incomparable Archie Goodwin. <laughs> Good night, Archie. Ah. have been listening to The New Adventures of Nero Wolf, starring Sidney Greenstreet. Tonight's transcribed story by John Edison was based on the characters created by Rex Stout. This is an Edwin Fadiman production, produced and directed by J. Donald Wilson. In the cast were Harry Bartell as Archie Goodwin, and Gene Bates, Irene Winston, Ted Von Eltz, Jerry Hausner, Vic Rodman, and Bill Johnstone. Next week at this same time, Nero Wolf and Archie will bring you the case of the shot in the dark. Don Stanley speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. There's music in the air tomorrow evening, music and fun, brought to you by Dennis Day, Judy Canova, and Grand Old Opry. Charming and boyish Dennis gets himself tangled in another bewildering situation, while Judy Canova gets together with her comedy pals for some mountain-style goings-on, and Saturday also means a killer cycle trip to Nashville for Grand Old Opry. Friday's fun includes Sam Spade and, of course, the magnificent Montague on NBC. NBC.